Six thousand dollars is what companies want to build a custom rollaway gate in front of our dream shop. Even if I went out and bought one of those gate kits online, that's pricing out to be five thousand dollars. So with a measly budget of five hundred bucks, we gotta get this done. Sixteen foot rollaway gate. Here we go. So I've got a problem. We've built a fairly large and very visible structure in my backyard here in my HOA managed neighborhood. Now technically this is approved, but it does not stop our neighborhood Karens from stopping every morning on their walk at the end of my driveway and staring in complete disgust. So we need to fence this thing off. And because of the insane and ever rising cost of labor these days, I've had to really search and then hire the cheapest laborer that I could find. So the end goal today is to have a 16 foot rolling gate that closes here, opens in this direction, tucks behind this fence line, and has a track that runs that way. Let's get working. At the very end, we'll come back and trim the top off to match everything else. We have this mason line running all the way across to make sure that is perfectly straight. It's level and it's setting up. Nine two by threes, 20 bucks. Mr. Barabico. What shirt you got on? Who's that? Before we get too far into today's video, gosh dang, I'm getting old. I've got something really cool to show you guys. It is from our friends over at LastFit. For those of you guys that have been around the channel for a little while, have seen this brand. Six years ago, LastFit reached out and offered me a pair of their LED lights for the 2007 Silverado. And six years later to this day, they still work phenomenal. And they just launched a new product, the LastFit Air Inflator. So whether you need a little bit of air in your bicycle tire, your car, or you're going to your kid's soccer game, these portable air inflators are so convenient. This one specifically can hold that power button for three seconds, and you'll see the LED digital display. My favorite part is this predetermined PSI you can get it to shut off at. Let's say I need a little bit of air in a tire of my Corvette. I'm going to shut it off, cold tire PSI at 30. All it is is a simple twist, and you're set up and good to go. So we're sitting at 18 PSI. Now it does have its air intake on the bottom, so be careful what it's sitting on top of. You don't want dirt and dust be sucking up into it. It's not just tires, obviously you can also pump up, call it a soccer ball. All right guys, I'll put a link in the description below to the LastFit air inflator. I love these things. As a soccer dad, as a car enthusiast, it's kind of a win-win. Link in the description below guys, support the brands that support this channel. Get back to this dang gate. I don't know why Texas always does this to us. It's like 101 degrees now, so. The good news with the heat is the concrete is rock solid. But this morning I ran out here because I noticed that this fence was moving around quite a bit. It turns out the concrete that the poles are in are, uh, are cracked. That's no good. So these sections are coming out. Both of these poles are coming out of the ground because we're going to re-cement the poles back down. But we're going to move them over. So each of these sections is going to be 8 feet, 8 feet. Staggered. A little more appropriate. Both post removed and placed right back into the ground. We have 80 pounds of concrete in each of these. That one has 160 pounds of concrete. So this should be pretty sturdy. This is where that rolling gate, again, is gonna roll this way. Those are all setting in. We're gonna start the fun task, removing all of these fence 
panels. I had a neighbor about three houses down get their entire fence replaced and they were kind enough to give me a few of their sets that actually were in really good condition still. So that's what these are. So we're gonna probably disassemble a few of these as well and use these slats in addition to whatever good ones I have left because we have a very challenged budget. been going on the last couple days with our fence we've got it somewhat mocked up so basically the fence line all the way to the edge of the driveway and then this portion here is just bolted in place for now we got to stain both sides and we saved a ton of money by using uh, scrap I couldn't believe how many rotten pieces I had you can see that entire section is replaced with my neighbor's fence so neighbor thank you very much this is a bunch of two inch tubular steel nothing special from a metal shop about 20 miles down the road convenient enough this came out to be not too expensive and is going to be the frame of our 16 foot rolling gate <laughs> Now, those of you that are curious about how this bed liner's been holding up, this is actually that $100 spray-in bed liner. And we're about a year and a half down the road. It's still solid. Now, next up in terms of our fun project, I have an idea what I'm gonna do for the frame of the gate. Before we start welding that thing together, I'm gonna go ahead and start staining my fence slats. Now, I did run and pick up enough, like, I don't know what these are called, pickets, fence pickets, for the fence portion, because I'm gonna have to screw each individual piece into that two by two steel, which is gonna be a pain in the butt. And I don't wanna mount wood that's already eight or nine years old. So we did have to fork out a little more money. We're about $100 of wood here. We're gonna stain all of this, in addition to all of that. How do we do it, guys? That looks so good with the stain and everything. Man, that is awesome. However, the staining is not complete. We're gonna have to do one more coat on this front side where we borrowed portions of our neighbor's fence because it had a different base color. So, uh, game plan for our gate. Very basic layout. This is the rolling gate frame gonna be done out of our two inch tubular. <laughs> steel. What I think I'm going to do is just a simple box and then run one across the center. Because we're using these traditional fence planks, it'll warp really bad. There's nothing in the center. So that is the game plan. We're going to measure this thing out one more time because I don't have a table or anything to do this on. So I think we're going to do it probably right here. I'm not going to burn my new concrete. So we're going to go with the uh, pebbled stuff, get it tacked up, make sure it fits and then booger weld the rest. So some of the details we're working through right now is the height of these casters. So if we use this V track that we got from that metal shop, this plate that'll be mounted into the concrete. And in addition, the V track, that's gonna add five inches to the height of whatever this frame's going to be. In order to do that, we need to take about five inches off of each of these posts. Our driveway here has a slight slope this direction. If I squared up this frame, that upright, when it butts up against this fence post, will be like that. I may get this a little bit off square and then weld it up and keep it parallel with this fence post upright. figuring this thing out. We have our small piece of track lying there on the concrete. So it's taking into account that slope and these are going actually pretty well. So for the most part, pretty happy with that. 
We have two more of these to go. Once I have these where I want them, I can actually lay this thing down and weld this thing properly. But my form of properly is very loose compared to actual guys that do this for trade. Got her all boxed and tacked up. Solid, super solid. It's been a few hours because we had our final game of the season for our six-year-old. And I also want to come on here and document this because the lighting is so eerie right now because apparently we're under an eclipse. Like there's a moon passing in front of the sun right this second. So the lighting is really interesting. So next step is to lay this guy down and actually weld this thing up fully. So right now it's just little tacks that are holding everything in place. These are slightly not to square and that's because I need that vertical aligned with that fence post or it's going to drive me absolutely nuts forever. You guys ready to see some best in class booger welding? Now, all jokes aside, one of my goals with this channel is to become a decent fabricator. So over time and practice in, I think I probably had the amperage a little bit too high. The wire speed, I tamed down the wire speed a little bit as I went and seemed to clean it up just a little bit. But just to show you guys, like I'm not hiding anything. Like that there. You got a little caterpillar action going on because it's hard to see where that seam is as you're welding in the helmet. I'm just making excuses. I just need to practice. So I'll take the grinder and clean a lot of these up just so visually they're a little bit more appealing. Fortunately, this rolling gate, it has one function is to roll that way and to roll this way. So I'm not worried structurally. I just want to get better at this and I'm excited to get to bring you guys along for the ride along the way. If you guys have not subscribed to the channel just yet, feel free to scroll down, hit the subscribe button below to see this dream shop come to life once we have the fence in place and Karen can stop staring at me. So next up here, our casters. We're gonna weld our casters onto our frame there and there. And then we have our cross members that are going across the center of this frame, which is serving no additional purpose outside of mounting wooden planks to it. You look at that guys we built that and it's curing right now so we had like six cans of truck bed coating i picked up from walmart about a year ago it was on the clearance rack and we used it there so that should be a pretty durable coating it's also very heavy so we're gonna let that cure up for a little while and we're shifting our attention to digging back in the dirt we need to dig out a good portion because i gotta lay a concrete footers for our track that's going to let this gate run behind this existing fence. We're gonna get our laser level out here and get the right grade going, but next up for me is to grab a shovel and start digging. Never ending project. Dream big, boy gonna make it. Stand tall, there's a higher road to take it. Let go of everything that you know and be wild in the misery. Yeah. I've been in the darkness for 40 days. All right, after a quick trip to the local Lowe's, we got ourselves six bags of 80 pound concrete and three bags of gravel. We'll throw the gravel down, compact it down as good as we can get it. And then we get to mix up a whole lot of concrete in this little bucket and toss her all in. We've also got ourselves our formers. Just kidding, they're formed. I got killed in the comments on the other video because I was calling them formers. The forms for the concrete laid, staked in. All this lumber is left over from when we did the shop foundation, including some number three rebar. That way we'll have rebar enforced concrete for this little footer. Man before. Yeah, I've been 
closer to Jesus before So can you help me out? Can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? But can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Only Schneikies it rolls. But I put it on backwards. So now I gotta pull it out and flip it around. Good news is the wheels work. We greased them up by hand. That was lovely. They roll really well. And this is a little bit heavier than I expected. The question right now is how far I run these tracks. There's absolutely no need for the track to continue down if the wheel stops there. And I went ahead and capped off these corners. They actually look really good. This is a two by four and a two by six standing upright. These is treated lumber. Technically this wood is rated for ground contact. Hopefully that's true. But that'll help stabilize this fence as well. And it just looks really clean as well. We're back to the middle of the week to where I work all day and then run out here at night and try to finish as much as I possibly can. Tell you what guys, the material quality these days, it's comical. These are the worst fence planks and these were the best out of three pallets. Just to get these things somewhat straight, I have two massive wood clamps and I'm doing my best here. So we're gonna throw two more screws in here in the middle and that'll probably be it for the night because I lost, lost my <laughs> $468 to this point. We're not done yet though. But check this out. So the bottom track hasn't been mounted. We're just gonna temporarily place it here because we are gonna do something to the concrete before this is final. And I don't want this mounted down when I'm doing that. We also need to throw in the second piece of the V-track and then bottom plate here for the additional, probably about five feet. We need to go here on our little DIY custom pad, which seems to be working out pretty well. <laughs> These are all different lengths. How is that? You would think when you buy these planks perfectly lined up across the top, theoretically the bottom would be the same way, but it's not. And it's causing these to drag quite a bit. So it is going to self clearance over time, but I might just take a saw and rip the bottom all the way across. We're going to get about five feet cut off of this one eighth by one inch piece of metal. Our little V track here, which our wheels run on are the casters. In addition, we have our roller guides now mounted up. Those roll nicely across the track. This is about 30 bucks off of Amazon, got it on a sale. On this end, we just need to add something to lock this, lock this in place. I cannot express how good this finally feels to have a fence back. I don't know. It's just privacy also with the new stain and everything put back together and everything level looking great. It just looks and feels great. The gate is exactly how we wanted it. Kind of masked in as you're walking by or just looking, 
you wouldn't really notice that there's a rolling gate there, but there's a 16 foot section right in the middle that rolls right behind that section there. Completely done by yours truly DIY for just above our budget of $500. We exceeded that by about 30 bucks. It's super simple to get in. I need to do something about this handle still because it hits on the other side, but reach that latch there at the top. Everything's welded up nice and solid. And this guy slides in real nicely like so. <laughs> That's a rolling gate, guys. Super, super stoked about this. Look at that thing roll. Man, I feel like we did so much in today's video. I don't even know where to begin. But at the end of the day, we still have a few things to do with the track. We are going to do something with the driveway like I mentioned before. So I'm not going to drill in just yet and mount this down with our concrete anchor. So right now it's just sitting underneath the weight of the gate. I tacked up the front side just to hold the bottom plate. And I took this edge with my grinder and then smoothed it down as much as possible. Kids running around all the time playing. I didn't want them to catch an edge. So this is all smooth. This comes all the way down on top of our special pad that we laid. We moved the dirt back in somewhat to fill in the trenches. All in all, I say we accomplished our task somewhat within budget. So we're just $30 above our $500 budget primarily because of that latch. This thinking thing was $17. <laughs> so I'm gonna blame this for blowing up our budget, but the entire fence has been stained. It looks so good. I say I have the best looking fence in the neighborhood at the moment. And if you guys are trying to tackle something like this, the material we used was a two inch 14 gauge steel. Go find yourself just a metal supplier because that was the biggest win of the day. Now, one major concern I do have is this pole. We put a lot of concrete down there. I have no worries down there, but these poles are not known for being very strong. And with the weight of the fence and also the gate, I got a feeling that one of these Texas Springs, that ain't gonna last. So stay tuned for a few months from now, when spring comes around, we get tornado weather, we'll see if this pole can actually hold up. Well, that's it guys. Thank you for hanging out with me till this point in the video. Roller coaster ride of our Molokai Dream Shop. Yes, today's project was nothing to do with the shop. It was all about the privacy in front of the shop, which I think is gonna be very important moving forward because we have a lot of work to do. Because our next task with the Dream Shop is the roof. And we'll see you guys when it's time to tackle that. Aloha. Aloha.